Hickok 45. You know, a lot of people claim that a 380 is just not enough gun. So you really ought to have two of them, right? <laughs> I'm going to keep pulling because <laughs> we tend to get light strikes sometimes with these things and this one didn't lock the slide back but uh, such as it is. Yeah, uh, bodyguard 380, the M&P, uh, you know, Smith, you know, Smith & Wesson almost forgot who made these things. Uh, bodyguard 380, let's come up here and talk about these things. <laughs> We've got two of them and this is really a chapter two but we wanted to, uh, you know, shoot them a little bit more and actually have a different one than we had in the other uh, video. This is the same one. Uh, this is the one you saw before that I struggled with taking down. I finally realized it's not quite that hard. I took both these apart before we even started, put them back together. And I may do it in the video or may not, but they're, they're really not that hard to take apart. I may have looked worse than they really are. Maybe I can show you what I mean. Okay, if I can do it quickly, probably be worse, right? The only thing is, these little guns, you gotta really make sure it's empty because uh, it's difficult to do without having your hand in front of uh, the muzzle, which I don't, I don't really like that. And get a hold of that. I got my little screwdriver here in case I need to get that loosened up. Now I said I can make it look easier, but you never know. Okay, it's out. Now, when you put it back, you gotta push that down, back in there, get it snapped in and swing it around. Ah. There we go. There. Okay. So I removed the pin and <laughs> replaced it. It is doable. They're, they're still not easy. I, I don't like it. You know, when you get right down to it, and that's why I'm kind of partial. I didn't really plan to do this, but I'm going to. There's a Glock 27 for those who don't realize what I just pulled out of my pocket. You know, that's the difference. And uh, once you get spoiled by that, hard to go back uh, you know it, it really is so that's one reason that I struggle and that I complain about some firearms you know being difficult to disassemble when in your eyes maybe they're not difficult to assemble so just had to do that didn't I, I don't know what I'm going to think of when I'm on camera even anyway so they're not that bad they're just not as easily uh, disassembled and reassembled as some other firearms okay like I say this is the same one we uh, we had before and uh hope you get back and see that video if you did not see it and you know how the gun does and what it does what it doesn't do uh i'm trying to remember in that video some of the things it didn't do i think the slide didn't lock back just like it didn't right there reliably uh was that this one i had this one in my right hand yeah this one didn't lock back on the last round it seems to be kind of magazine specific too so you have to be ready for that possibility and uh, I've been shooting them out here today again, and I've gotten light strikes with both of them. So, you know, but you have that second strike capability, you know. Now, ideally, you know, when that happens, you, you, you want to think about hang fire. You know, when you pull a trigger on a firearm and it doesn't, nothing happens, but you know it's loaded. You want to wait, you know, 20, 30 seconds and then check it to make sure it's not a, a delayed fire, you know, hang fire and that kind of thing. With these guns, it's it's just a light strike so just pull the trigger again and go on uh so anyway let's uh we'll shoot a couple more here got uh, this now like i said this one is from galloway precision and i've done some some research on them and from what i can gather you may know more about it than i do that uh they're pretty well respected but you see mixed reviews on them and people that buy the kits, uh, it seems that some of them uh, struggle getting them in, the, the trigger kits. And others, I, I was following a thread on a forum, and like every other one, somebody was having a lot of trouble. Then uh, people were chiming in, and, well, you watch the video and do that, and, and it's no problem at all, you know, and they're giving advice. And so I don't know. I didn't put this in myself, so I, I don't have uh, firsthand experience with that. I do know this, that... There is a world of difference. Let me shoot these two magazines out and I will uh, give you a close up of it maybe. Well, let me just go ahead and show you where this one breaks. If you can tell where this trigger breaks, even with ammo, and I'll shoot that uh, red plate. When I pull the trigger, if you can see very well, but I'm gonna go back, 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 back. 
Oh, hang up. <laughs> I mean, your finger, it breaks way back here against the frame. See, it's against the frame. Now that may not be a problem for you, but it's like the little LCPs, LC9, which they have changed, I think. But when it has come back that far, it's a problem for me and my large hand, all right? So, this one is way different. Did I put a round bit? I did. Light strike. Okay. Uh, look where this one breaks. Right, well, where your finger is, now the trigger is against the frame, but your finger is, is further forward uh, significantly, even though it doesn't appear in here. It feels like a, a world of difference if, to the shooter. If you've ever fired one, you know what I mean. It's like night and day. It just feels great to me. It feels great, okay? So uh, if, if this gun is reliable uh, with that trigger, it would be very desirable for me, but it hasn't proven that yet. Uh, neither one of them really, to tell you the truth. Uh, I don't know. Mainly it's the light strikes. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's something you can overcome. It's not like some kind of major malfunction where you got to clear the magazine, clear the chamber, everything has to come out and fix it. It's just uh, pull the trigger again. So not highly desirable but better than some other problems you could have right so anyway mainly we're in a chapter two but i wanted to show you that they uh they sent that to us and uh, they probably knew i was too dumb to install it myself and uh, i wasn't really motivated enough to since this really isn't my carry gun uh if if i discover that either one of them especially that one it smooths out and it's close to 100 percent or maybe 100% reliable, it's definitely one that I could consider at times, no doubt about it, because with that trigger system, it solves the problem of, of where it breaks. I mean, man, if the LC9, the LCP, you know, any of these little guns like this uh, would break in the same place, I mean, that, that feels like a big gun to me in terms of the trigger, which is the most important thing. I love the feel of that trigger. Uh, John's not as crazy about it, but for me, it feels really good. All right. Again, I have a large hand and that's part of it. So let's try it again. Let's just, let's just shoot this one. We shot that one a lot in the other one. Uh, video. I like the trigger on this one. Let's get these in my pocket. All right. Oh, I had a, uh, whoop, I don't have it out here. I had a Alabama holster sent me a holster for this, a uh, pocket holster. I had it out in the barn to bring out. I forgot about it. All right, let's try that pot. <laughs> oh, I forgot we got two liters up there. Whoa! That thing blew in half, didn't it? With a 380. Oh. Uh -oh. Okay. Not sure that trigger caught really well that time. <laughs> That's interesting what a 380 does with those things. Oh, let's, let's whip those arms around on that tree. These 380s will knock them around a bit. <laughs> that trigger's not wanting to reset. Click. So as you can see, having the uh, second strike capability on these firearms is pretty <laughs> important. Uh, apparently it's needed. Let's try that again. I've got two more magazines here. Let's 
go for the gong. I got him. So, such as they are, uh, good feeling gun with that trigger, I'll have to say, but we've got some uh, issues to work around, don't we? Uh, if this gun were uh, reliable, as I said before, it'd be really desirable for me for a pocket 380, but it hasn't proven to be uh, reliable enough for me. So too many, too many uh, uh, weak strikes, uh, same with this one. Uh, I don't need that in a pocket gun. Don't need that in a carry gun and a defensive gun. And I'm a little bit perplexed because I mean, this is two different firearms. And I have generally heard positive things about the Bodyguard 380. And, uh, you know, and I mean, most of the time they, they work okay. But anyway, that's what you get. That's what's what they're doing. And uh, it's a couple of different ones. Uh, I kind of want to like this gun because it... Uh, it's got a good feel. It's a kind of a solid feeling gun and everything. The design seems, uh, you know, solid, but uh, still got to be reliable. It's got to be a little bit more reliable than that for me. And uh, we'll bring them out and shoot them every now and then, and uh, you know, see if they—they're both new guns, you know—and see if they break in and, and become more reliable. Kind of an important factor in a uh, carry gun, right? So anyway, a little chapter two action with the, the extra one thrown in there, uh, the, the Galloway trigger uh, system, and uh, that, that seems very desirable, uh, but again, uh, I guess it's, it's, it's up in the air in terms of how reliable the, the, the firearms are just uh, inherently, I, I don't know. I, I just haven't had a lot of experience except for the videos you've seen and, and maybe, I don't know, a few hundred rounds outside the videos, and so it's... The reliability's been a little sporadic, all right? So, anyway, look like well-made guns. They feel pretty good, uh, but that trigger feels great. But, uh, so, anyway, not 100% reliable. Just like me, life is good. Wait a minute, life isn't good yet. It's almost good. <laughs> John and I were shooting these uh, after the, the video. You're really not in the video right now. But during the video, after the video, we shot some more because it was uh, just interesting to us. So we shot the uh, the stock one that has not been modified. We tried to get it to do that again. It was it has done that occasionally. The light strikes is what I'm talking about, of course, where you pull the trigger and nothing happens. Uh, uh, but not nearly as frequently as this was doing. You know, in a video, this was doing it with every magazine, I guess, at least once, right? Just about. And uh, we shot, shot three or four magazines. I shot a couple. This one did not do it, although it has done it, but it's way more infrequent. Well, we got to looking at it. Uh, John, being the scientist he is, we figured it out. And I know, you know, from experience with single action or double action revolvers, if you don't have enough hammer fall, you get light strikes. And uh, let's look at the, this is the stock one here. No modifications. Okay, I'm going to try to control the trigger. Show you now. Notice how far the hammer comes back. As it moves back, it comes back basically to the edge of the polymer before it releases. See, it's down into the polymer frame. There we go. Do it again. See, it's down there. It's going to come back to the about right there. Yeah, down into the polymer area there before it releases. All right. Now on the, the short stroke kit, you have, uh, okay, you see where it comes to. Now the other one again was coming down to about right there. This one's going to release a lot sooner. Yeah, and of course that's what makes it a beautiful trigger. Uh, but, let's see it again. It's going to break right, yeah, it gets about right there and it breaks. Yeah, so it's up here instead of back here. So that's big, of course. Uh, you need as much hammer fall as you can get, of course, to, to pop the cap, so to speak. I know back in the 70s and 80s when people were always carrying revolvers and shooting revolvers, little carry revolvers, people would make the mistake of lightening up the trigger uh, too much. You know, the mainspring to wear, oh, beautiful trigger, but, uh, you know, a lot of misfires, that kind of thing. So, so I don't know, uh, you know, what exactly uh, it is about it if uh, it just needs to be reinstalled or, or what the deal is there but that's the reason that the caps are not uh, popping you know not as much hammer fall or at least reliably so that's what it is 
great feeling trigger. I love it, but it needs to work, right? So that's it. Being the crime solvers that we are, we just uh, we solved that mystery and uh, wanted to point that out to you before we really let you go. Now life is good.